Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett and welcome to a new episode of UFOs and the Paranormal. I have a great episode for you today, I think. I call this one, Seven Extraordinary Cases of Extraterrestrial Healings. Healing, I believe, is one of the main ET agendas on our planet. I've documented more than 300 cases coming from all over the world. These cases stretch back, actually, more than 100 years and are still occurring to the present day. And they involve all different types of healings. Everything from healings of injuries, flesh wounds, broken bones, to minor conditions like back aches or stomach aches, or even more serious conditions, and chronic diseases as well. What I'm doing today is presenting to you seven cases that I think involve really extraordinary healings, ones that are very well documented and cover a wide variety of conditions. And again, I think these cases should get a lot more attention than they're getting. I'm kind of surprised they aren't front page news because there are so many cases. So I've got seven cases I want to talk about today, so let's just get started. And the first case I'd like to talk about today involves a man by the name of Terry Derish Walters. He's from England, and he was actually healed of a very severe problem with his back, with his spine. Terry Derish Walters is from Priestwood. This is in Bracknell, England, and he has had encounters his whole life. But in 2005, Terry was in pain from a very severe back problem. That is, until he was taken on board a UFO. He found himself in an operating theater being given surgery by what looked like a reptilian humanoid. And following this experience, his back pain was gone. As his daughter Julie Kendall says, he reckoned they cured his bad back, which had baffled even top medical professionals. What's really interesting is Terry was able to provide proof um, and uh, actually shows doctor reports uh, of how his back was cured. And this turned out to be just the beginning for him. Um, following this experience, he started being taken on board regularly by human-like ETs, he believes, from Orion. He had also UFO sightings and, again, many onboard encounters. He says he's never had any encounters with the Greys. But uh, they are all about healing, he says. Um, in fact... As Terry says, and I quote, the illnesses they have cured are almost beyond belief. What's very interesting about Terry's case is that he ended up becoming a powerful healer himself. He reports that he is in constant telepathic contact with the ETs. He ended up writing a book about his experiences, which include not only his own UFO encounters, but ghostly encounters, precognition of disasters, memories of a past life where he was an Egyptian pharaoh, and more. Uh, what's really cool about his case is he has many well-verified cases of healing other people, of a wide variety of conditions, actually. He healed someone of shingles, another person of knee problems, another person of a yeast infection, another person of myalgic encephalomyelitis, uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. And in fact, he has testimonials from several of these people. So this is pretty well verified. And what I'd like to do is play just a small uh, one, two minute clip so you can hear Terry speak for himself about just a tiny portion of his encounters. 
a building, or yeah. one person took you into a building, yes. and yeah. then they took a... I thought I was assuming it was a blood sample. You. Okay. Yeah. Did you not wonder why they were doing that? Of course that? I did. <laughs> did I you not object? No, but I, no, because I just wasn't the flow. I was in a state of shock, I suppose. Okay. But I, I did have a feeling that there was no harm in what was happening. Okay. You know. So um, you were quite at peace with the situation. Yeah, and of course then, later years, I can only assume that it was a craft that I went on. Okay. Some sort of, a, if you like, alien craft. But my my granddaughter said to me, "Well, you don't see UFOs, Granddad. How can you call them UFOs when you claim to be on board these things? So you know what they are. Mm. You know they're ships from somewhere else." Exactly. So that was probably a bit of a wake-up call when I was a kid. Um, but this is my friend telling me that at the time he remembered it. He didn't go inside himself. There was two boys. There was Dave and a, and a guy called Roy. And they said that they felt as though they were... So as you can see, this is a pretty extraordinary case. As you can see, it's a very extraordinary case. And the next case I'd like to talk about involves a gentleman by the name of Jean Miguerez. This case actually took place in France and involves a healing from, of injuries resulting from a severe auto accident. This case is very well known in France and is very well verified as well. The case of Jean Miguerez was actually researched by French UFO researcher Guy Terade, and his case, Jean Miguerez, occurred on August 11, 1969. Jean Miguerez was an ambulance driver and was driving his ambulance near Rouen, France, when he heard a telepathic voice say, do not be afraid. Nothing bad will happen to you. You will feel nothing. So this voice came out of the blue, and it was 20 minutes later, while he was still driving, when he saw a 60-foot wide metallic object shrouded in mist moving towards him. At this time, his ambulance was traveling at about 100 miles per hour, and at this moment, his ambulance was struck by an oncoming vehicle. Uh, Jean Maguire's didn't see it coming. It was a head-on collision and quite severe. And he was actually trapped in the wreckage of his vehicle. And at this time, he says, a being, quote, materialized right next to him and assured him that although he was injured, he was alive and would feel no pain. This being told him, and I quote, I am going to regenerate you by a procedure that is not yet known on your planet. And this being proceeded to remove a one inch wide glowing white disc from a pouch on his belt and placed it against the nape of Jean's neck. He felt a prickling sensation move down his spinal column and then the being said, this accident was necessary for you but we will come back to see you. As a result of this accident, Jean suffered several broken bones and serious injuries. He was rushed to the hospital. He had to undergo multiple operations and was actually declared clinically dead twice. And when his gallbladder actually burst, the beings telepathically told him to leave this hospital. Uh, he obeyed. He left and was put in another hospital, the Montpellier Hospital, near his home. And there he underwent more operations and had yet another near-death experience. But after three weeks in the hospital, he recovered and was sent home. And the beings told him he had succeeded in his mission and that, quote, we will continue to protect you. Um, Unfortunately, uh, the injuries from this accident were still causing him all kinds of problems. And in fact, three years later, he was still in pain and unable to walk. And then one day, uh, this healing was completed in, quote, record time. And he suddenly found himself able to walk even without a limp. And like the above case involving Walters, uh, Jean Maguires discovered that he had, quote, the gift of healing. Uh, he ended up writing a few books about his experiences and UFOs in general. He's become a very well-known contactee in his country of France, 
and to this day, he says, he remains in telepathic contact with ETs. The third case I'd like to talk about involves a lady from Sacramento, California, by the name of Connie Izell. Her case is really amazing because all she has had lifelong contacts with ETs and has actually been healed on multiple occasions. And in fact, she reports at least three different healings. One involving a healing of uterine cramps, another involving a healing of arthritis, and a third healing involving injuries resulting from a very severe car accident. In fact, so severe, doctors thought she would lose her leg. And of course, as we shall see, that didn't happen. Throughout her life, Connie Isell says that she's experienced quite a few unusual paranormal events, but never really attributed them to UFOs until 1989. And it was that year uh, she woke up one evening so, to find her bed surrounded by strange figures. And although she didn't quite realize it at the time, she now realizes that she was in fact being visited by extraterrestrials. As she says, and I quote, the ETs are not too pretty to look at, though. One being I see frequently has a hideous head. He hides behind a bright glow and a long, thin torso that moves like an insect's body. He reminds me of a praying mantis. This being seems to be an advisor or teacher, whereas the doctors are short little beings. Being examined or operated on by a human doctor is not exactly fun. So being examined or operated on by non-human doctors with big bald heads and big black eyes can be even more uncomfortable. Yet, I have no complaints. For example, in 1989, I received an ET health checkup during which they injected me with a clear gel similar to white grape jelly. I was informed that this was for my benefit and that this was a healing. And there were also lights involved in this procedure. So she reports that when she woke up the next morning, this jelly-like substance still clung to her skin and she washed it off in the shower, but she is convinced that the ETs cured her of a problem she was having involving severe uterine cramping. She had been suffering from this for several weeks prior to this experience, but following this visitation, all symptoms disappeared. That was her first healing, but it certainly wouldn't be her last. It was just three years later, in 1992, that she reported her second healing. She woke one morning to find three evenly spaced bruises on her knee. This was clearly unusual. And since she noticed this, she also noticed something else. She had pretty severe arthritis in her knee. But following this experience, her knee didn't hurt at all, and the arthritis completely disappeared. She's had no pain since. And it was three years later that she was involved in a severe automobile accident with her friend. And Connie was left gravely injured. And in fact, at the hospital, her doctors told her that her right leg would have to be amputated. Connie, however, believed that her ET friends could heal her, as she had already experienced healings from them before. So while in the hospital and desperate, she prayed to the ETs for help, and she is absolutely convinced they responded. And I'll just quote her directly. As Connie says, It was an extraordinary feeling to wake up alive. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw an E.T., a very tall being with whom I was familiar. When I turned to look at him directly, he was no longer there. So while Connie doesn't remember if they actually operated on her or not, she believes they did, because to everyone's amazement, and especially Connie's, she recovered quickly, and her leg was saved. And the doctors were so stunned they gave her the nickname Miracle Legs, so they could not understand how she had been healed. And this is typical of these cases where people are healed inside hospitals. Uh, leaves a long trail of very amazed and confused doctors. 
I love Connie Eisel's case because it involves so many different healings. And it's also interesting that she was actually healed on one occasion in her hospital room. About 10% of the cases I've found involve healings which took place in hospitals, which sounds extraordinary, but there's so many cases, it's clear that this is what's actually happening. And the next case I'd like to talk about involves a gentleman by the name of Jerry Wills. I did have the wonderful opportunity to meet him face to face and talk about his healing. And Jerry Wills was healed as a young boy of a severe fever. And like many of these cases, Jerry Wills also developed the ability to heal himself. It's an extraordinary case and one I really wanted to include because he has so many testimonials of his ability to heal. And his healing itself is also extraordinary. Jerry Wills had his first contact with extraterrestrials in 1965 um, outside his home in Kentucky. He was only 12 years old at the time, and he would often stay outside night after night watching these UFOs, which looked like star-like objects darting at right angles very high in the sky above his house. It was just a few months later when he had a very close-up sighting of a typical flying saucer, a hovering metallic ship with blinking colored lights. And it was the next year, when he was 13 years old, he was out in the same location out in the woods near his home, when he was approached by a blonde-haired, blue-eyed stranger dressed in a beige jumpsuit with a silver belt. This man said his name was Zoe and that he was an extraterrestrial. And this began a series of very complex contacts in which Jerry was taught of all different subjects about science, history, philosophy, religion, and other subjects. And in fact, the Zoe, this human-like extraterrestrial, visited him about three to six times a month for more than five years. So this really uh, changed Jerry's life forever and these teachings seem to have been highly effective for Jerry Wills has since invented several items including a sighting and control helmet for pilots, a virtual reality device, a guardian crystal which helps its user detect auras, and in addition to teaching him many things, Wills says that the aliens cured him when he was very ill. It was nighttime. It was around 1968. He was just a little kid. Jerry was in his room suffering from a very high fever. And in the middle of the night, he found himself being taken on board a craft. And to his surprise, this wasn't involving human-like ETs, but your typical gray type aliens. And they told him, speaking telepathically, to, quote, relax and let them do their work. Uh, so he did. He just lay there on the table while they gave him an injection in each arm. It's pretty much all he remembers. But the next morning, he woke up and found that his fever was gone. He recovered completely in less than a day. Uh, to this day, he still remains in contact with his alien friends. And today, he has become a very well-known and powerful psychic healer. He has an incredible number of testimonials uh, of people who have been healed by him. I'm going to put his, the address to his website in the description of this video because if you want to go there you can read these testimonials yourself. Uh, so he's yeah, a very well-known person in this field. He often speaks at UFO conventions. He's written a book about his experiences called Fantastic Journeys and has also had a book written about him by researcher Rod Haberer. This book is called Healer and focuses on the many cases in which Jerry Wills has been able to heal others. So this is a pattern we see over and over again with UFO contact. People are visited, they're healed, and they themselves become healers. The fifth case I'd like to talk about involves a very well-known researcher. Her name is Ellen Crystal. Sadly, she has passed away.
but as a young child, Ellen Crystal did report a very unusual healing involving an undiagnosed but pretty severe stomach problem. And uh, it's a very interesting case, and might I say even extraordinary, which is why I wanted to talk about it today. Ellen Crystal first became interested in UFOs as an adult uh, when she had several UFO sightings outside her home in Hollywood. And she became very interested in this subject and began to investigate UFO activity in the Pine Bush area of upstate New York. And she eventually wrote the very well-received book, Silent Invasion, about UFO activity in this area. She was able to have many sightings and was actually able to photograph UFOs on multiple occasions. And on at least one occasion, she herself saw a humanoid. So it became clear to her that she had turned from UFO researcher to a UFO contactee. So this was around the 1980s, but after realizing that she was a contactee herself, she realized that, uh, or discovered I should say, that her contacts probably went much farther back than that, perhaps as early as 1952, when she was only two years old and living in her home in New Jersey with her parents. At that age, she had developed a very severe illness. As Ellen Crystal says, and I quote, I had been sick for about nine months, but no one knew what I had. I recalled the doctors drawing outlines of my organs on my abdomen so my mother would, could point to the ones that were enlarging. I also remembered having to stay inside while my friends were outside playing. I asked my mother, what happened when I was sick? How old was I? What was going on? She told me I was about one when I started getting sick, but nobody knew why. She gave me a long account of how I got sicker and sicker, and no one knew what I had except to say that my stomach was enlarged and very upset. My parents and the doctors feared I might die because I was so much sicker. I said to my mother, Then what? And she replied, well, one day in April, you were perfectly fine. It was very strange, she said. One day I was deathly ill, and overnight I was completely better. She never figured it out. So this was an unresolved mystery for quite some time. However, years later, Ellen Crystal went to visit a psychic reader. And this psychic, not knowing anything about Ellen said that she was healed by aliens who had hovered outside her home and affected a cure. And Ellen believes that this uh, was accurate because this psychic was able to provide other information that turned out to be totally true, such as the color of Ellen's house, uh, the date of her illness, and more. So it's a really interesting case of a UFO healing of a UFO researcher. Unfortunately, the aliens did not come back to cure Ellen Crystal of pancreatic cancer, which she developed around age 50 to 52 and in 2002. At age 52, Ellen Crystal passed away. So Ellen Crystal is not the only UFO researcher who has actually reported a healing. I uh, have recorded several of these types of cases involving healings of UFO researchers. So I think it's an important case. And the sixth case I'd like to talk about today involves a gentleman by the name of Ivan Rivera Morales. I like this case because it involves a gentleman who actually asked for a healing and received it. And he's also a very credible witness. He's a police officer. So it's absolutely an extraordinary case and deserves a place on this list. In 1980, Ivan Rivera Morales, who was a police officer from Puerto Rico, began to pray for a miracle because he was in the hospital suffering from a severe case of rheumatic fever, which was not getting better. But he was in such severe pain that he was unable to move, and the doctors were unable to help him. They actually sent him home. 
And one evening, as he lay in bed, he says, two golden spheres of light appeared, and then transformed into four-foot-tall gray ETs. They told him, do not be afraid, speaking telepathically. And the next thing Ivan knows, he's inside this UFO, which took off upward and then dived down into the ocean into an apparent undersea base. Ivan described the space as being very dimly lit and freezing cold. He was put on a metallic table. He saw other greys moving around him. They gave him a bitter-tasting drink. This is something that does happen in a number of ET cases, including healings. He says samples of semen were taken, and there was a strange mental bonding procedure, uh, which again is another procedure many people report. But according to Ivan, he, he says this imbued him with a great sense of peace. It really gave him a lot of comfort. He doesn't remember a whole lot else, but the next thing he does remember is waking up in his bedroom, and it was three hours later than he had been taken. So following this encounter, his rheumatism was markedly improved. While it wasn't completely gone, uh, he no longer suffered any pain or the, any deformity caused by the disease. So this is a very interesting case of healing. And the last case I'd like to talk about today, case 7, um, is really a poignant case because it occurred to a four-year-old child who is suffering from rheumatic fever. His name is Gabriel Ortega, and his case is very well verified by doctors. His mother was present when this healing happened. It's one of my favorite cases, really, of UFO healings. On September 28, 1988, a woman by the name of Asbel Ortega Flores she's from Purin, Chile, was driving with her mother, Alicia, and her four-year-old son, Gabriel. They were returning to their home, actually, after traveling to a city in Chile called Los Angeles to visit doctors. Gabriel had been diagnosed with rheumatoid fever, which had severely damaged his heart. And in fact, his condition was so critical that his doctors said that even crying or any slight agitation could cause a heart attack and death. So they are driving along the highway between the cities of Angol and Los Sauces. Gabrielle was in the back seat of the car asleep and Asbel and her mother Alicia were in the front seat. They came around a curve in the road to see a large round glowing object with a grayish band around the center. This object, they estimate, was about 20 feet in diameter and hovered only a few hundred feet above the highway. Asbel says that they were driving at around 40 miles per hour, but seeing this strange object, they slowed the car down to observe it more closely. And at this point, both she and her mother noticed a strange sensation of heat inside their bodies. Neither of them felt any fear, only awe and wonder. But what was really interesting is at this point, suddenly, four-year-old Gabrielle woke up. And as Asbel says, and I quote, he was very animated and chatty. Before that, he had been very limp and unable to even raise his head. So as they were watching this object and as all of this was going on, other cars began to approach from the opposite direction. Asbel flashed her lights at them, trying to get them to look at the UFO, but oddly, none of them seemed to notice it. But she did notice an odd layer of, quote, dark mist, where this UFO was hovering motionlessly. So after about a total of 15 minutes, this object now moved to the right and disappeared over the treetops. And Asbel, her mother Alicia, continued their way uh, to their home in Purin. They later returned to Los Angeles for more medical tests. And here they confirmed that four-year-old Gabriel was no longer sick. 
As Asbel says, and I quote, the doctor was able to ascertain that my son was completely healthy. The doctor admitted to me that he couldn't find any explanation to the situation. So this healing is actually verified by doctors. It was investigated thoroughly by researchers Ramon Nava Osorio and Raul Nunez. They conducted a full investigation, interviewing the family, obtaining statements from the doctors, which said in part, At the time, events occurred for which there is no known logical explanation. Uh, since this encounter, the Flores family reports having many incredible coincidences which assisted them through difficult periods in their lives and which they attribute to the UFO they had encountered. So the investigators ask, and I quote, Is it possible that Gabriel's sudden healing had a direct connection with the incredible light that accompanied his mother's car that evening? Although we are always reserved and expecting some other type of explanation, which we have not found up to this moment, we believe that it was the effect of this light that not only affected Gabriel, but his mother and grandmother as well, as both women felt themselves invaded by an intense feeling of heat from head to toe. This tells us that something was going on at that time on that dark road. So these investigators did a very thorough job, Ramon Nava Osorio and Raul Nunez. They were actually able to locate many other reports of sightings along this same stretch of highway around that same time. Uh, not only sightings, but landings and car chases. In fact, on October 21st, 1968, which is less than one month following the Flores' encounter, an ambulance driver says that his ambulance was followed along the same stretch of road by a, quote, brightly lit UFO. As Ramon Nava Osorio and Raul Nunez report, and I quote, an experience such as this is uncanny, and certainly more than one reader will question its authenticity. They are in their right to do so. We can only say that as a policy, we never publish anything without having confirmed the original sources, and in this event, the protagonists themselves restated their experience, a fact that leads us to believe once more that we know very little about our surroundings, much less about ourselves, and leads us to think that on certain occasions, higher intelligences manifest on our earthly plane. There you go. Those are the seven extraordinary cases of extraterrestrial healing. And it's really just the tip of the iceberg. I did cover these cases in my book, The Healing Power of UFOs, 300 Documented Cases of Extraterrestrial Healing. And yeah, just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many cases, really cases from every major researcher out there. People like Barbara Lamb, Timothy Good. Timothy Beckley, Brad Steiger, John Mack, Bud Hopkins, David Jacobs, Edith Fiore, Ray Hernandez. I could go on. This is not nearly as rare as people might think. Again, this is a major ET agenda. This is one of the reasons they are contacting humanity. These cases deserve a lot more attention than they're getting. And that's really why I wanted to do this episode for you today to let you know that this is an ET agenda. Also, how advanced the ETs are in their ability to heal people, how widespread these cases are, and the fact that they do deserve more attention. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode today. I really want to thank you very much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And until next time, keep searching for answers. And most importantly, keep having fun. Bye now.